But we're going to begin this morning in Kenosha, Wisconsin, after a very controversial visit from President Trump. He toured the damage and posed for what critics called photo ops in what he suggested was a show of support for the community and law enforcement after recent unrest there. The president also painted a dark picture of a city torn apart by conflict, even though most protests there have been peaceful, including a protest event that happened during his visit. He did not meet with the family of Jacob Blake. Our Mola Lenghi is in Kenosha again for us today. Mola, good morning to you. Well, good morning, Tony. You know, the two glaring issues and topics that are consuming Kenosha are the Jacob Blake shooting and systemic racism, which, of course, sparked the protests we've seen uh, over the last week or so. Now, instead of focusing on the causes of those problems, the president instead focused on the symptoms of those problems, the violence and the destruction that have rocked this city. This should never happen. A thing like this should never happen. In Kenosha Tuesday, President Trump got a first-hand look at the damage from the aftermath of the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Kenosha has been ravaged by anti-police and anti-American riots. Mr. Trump focused on the violence instead of the peaceful protests for racial justice. You believe systemic racism is a problem in this country? Well, you know, you just keep getting back to the opposite subject. We should talk about the kind of violence that we've seen in Portland and here and other places. It's tremendous violence. The president was greeted by protesters, but also by his supporters. I do think it was good that he was here to see for himself firsthand uh, what has been happening over the last week here in the city. Mr. Trump never directly mentioned Jacob Blake, nor did he meet with Blake's family. We need a president that's going to unite our country and take us in a different direction. That's right. On Tuesday, the Blake family joined a Justice for Jacob rally in the neighborhood where he was shot. The rally offering services often lacking in the African-American community, like voter registration and COVID-19 testing. We're using it to talk about Jacob and stand up my son. Since he can't stand for himself, we'll stand him up. Blake's father, Jacob Blake III, said all that matters is his son's health. We, as a family, only care about Jacob. We're not political pawns. We're not po political photo ops. All that we care about is the recovery of Jacob Blake. And Blake's sister insists the justice they seek goes beyond Jacob. People. Justice for black people as a whole. We want to be able to um, walk around in our skin and not feel like we've broken the law already. Benjamin Crump is the family attorney. We would have liked to engage with him about uh, reform to address the systematic racism that causes uh, from city to city, state to state, uh, the extrajudicial killings of African-American people by the police. Well, Jacob Blake Sr. is also calling for immediate police reform, which, you know, is a cry we hear from protesters pretty much every single day. He's also calling for the arrest and the immediate firing of the officer who shot his son. That officer is on leave during the course of the shooting investigation. Meanwhile, Jacob Blake remains in the hospital. He is recovering, paralyzed from the waist down. Gail.